Okay, today we are going to get into the review of a live event done on May 7th. And this has to do with links that are around the internet for people that are using live code, formerly known as Runtime Revolution. This is part one of the series, and this is for the edification of everybody, not just the new people to live code, but people that are really want to expand their knowledge beyond what they've already done. Uh, I'm an accomplished programmer, and yet there's so many areas that I don't know how to do. I'm not either very good at them, or I haven't had a project where I've had to dig in and find out just how to do those particular items. So what we're trying to do is find out how many things in our history, how many things in our current world today can benefit us and shortcut our ability to get projects done. So therefore, we're doing something in four days rather than a week and a half. One of the areas that I hope that will become clear here is that resources are quite valuable on the web if you know where they are. If you don't know what to search for, you just have a tough time finding something. So we're trying to get rid of the accidental, gee, I found this, I'm glad I did. Hopefully these videos will come down into the category of many of them out of the 130 you're going to want to keep. So with that, Let's get on with the show. Okay, this is Jim Alt, and I'm currently sitting in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's our springtime, so it's getting warm. And today what I wanted to do was quickly go through a lot of the links that are on the web that many people either don't know about or they found them a long time ago and forgot them. And maybe what's going to happen is it'll trigger some things in our little community here that'll help pull things together and those resources that can really help us will become fresh in our minds. It'll be bookmarked. And what I've created, thanks to the guys um, over in Europe, I am creating a page on livecode.tv and what that page will have is a lot of links. Right now, the page is going to contain the links I'm going to go through today in pretty much the same order. I shouldn't be doing it in a different order unless there are questions. But the idea is that I want to go through a little bit of who's important today. So when you go to a resource, many things you find out there are like from 2003 or 2005. Are those people still around? Is the information still accurate? And so part of what I want to do is give perspective to the way the Internet's working today. Part of that is, number one, I want to tell you who the speakers were last week in San Jose so that you know that they are considered relevant and current today and worthy of being a speaker at the conference. The next thing I want to do is take a quick trip through some of the history and pay a couple of particular notes to the way that today's social media can help us with live code and the iPhone and the iPad. And you'll see some examples of something that happened uh, three, four years ago and runs right up until this last week. And those are little footprints on the internet that we should pay attention to so we can create a better community. The next part I'm going to go through are some of the people out there who've posted things that, yes, they're three or four or five years old, but they're still relevant today. They're the tips and tricks and sample stacks that we should use for anyone learning live code or for some people who are advanced like me, but I'm only advanced in certain areas. The idea is that when I want to step into a new area for me, Ken Ray or Trevor DeVore have wonderful stuff for me, even though they put it up there three or four or five years ago, because it's still revolution, and live code hasn't changed that in its newest version. So we can still use those wonderful lessons. The number of links I have in today's presentation set up is about 130 or more, but you'll see some of them are just quickly things I'm going to move through, like a quick slideshow to show you examples so once you know it's there, you can go to the page that I've already prepared, 
but I'm not going to tell you right now because if you go to that page, you'll be doing that instead of watching my presentation. But the point is that right after this, you'll be able to go to back to any of those links and go through basically what I've done in your own browser and, of course, bookmark some of them. And you'll find out near the end of the presentation what I think we should try to do to make our community bigger and have more people participate so we all benefit from some of these great things people are doing on the Internet and in their own little computer worlds and companies. And so we can all get maybe some more presenters, some more topics. So with that, what I'm going to do is switch over to my desktop. And you can see this is part of our site now. This is a page here, so you can always get to these links. And I'm not going to go down the whole page, but if you really want to see it, I have 140 or so links here. But the point here is that someone like Judy Perry spoke. They were invited by RunRev. Uh, Devin Assay at BYU. Ken Ray. Jan Schenkel. i got to skip that next guy. But David Bovel, Andre Garcia. Jan Schenkel, Trevor DeVore, these are people you really want to pay attention to and follow. Their websites have a lot of value, and they keep them current. They'll, and I'm going to scroll just a little bit. And, yeah, we're skipping, yeah, he's not here today, good. Uh, then there's Richard Gaskin, Scott Rossi, of course, who's somebody everybody should follow. Now, there are three people here who spoke that you may not be familiar with because uh, Larry Walker, Michael McCreary, and Peter Favaro are people that run companies. They're out there doing things, but they're using live code today as part of how they run their company. Very interesting how they do it. These are, again, people and companies that are using live code to do something quite valuable and today. Um, interesting about, I talked a little bit with Peter Favaro last week at the, at the conference, and he's combining his He's a psychologist, but he also studies game theory. Um, it, interesting how he can put things together. Maybe he'll do a talk. He certainly did one for RunRub. Maybe he'll do a presentation one Saturday. Okay, now we go to the historical links. And what I was saying, um, let's see, URL of the presentation. Okay, there it is. Yep, that hit the, hit the okay. Um, this is... This is a valuable resource on the web. It got Wikipedia and mention, and it's got several citations. They used HyperCard to do quite a bit of their student training, student outreach. And we have a person here today, Colin Hallgate, who knows a whole lot about that. And here we are looking at a valuable contribution using HyperCard back in those days. And Here's another bit of history, but it's still alive, I believe. This is a, um, a site, an FTP site, with a lot of the old HyperCard stacks. And a lot of educators still use them or work with them. And this is one of those repositories. I'd like to find a couple more of these so we can archive and reuse those resources. Now, I'm going to skip to the next one here. Again, I'm moving through to mention how this, this comes into play. Now, here's an interesting one with the McAuliffe Space Education Center. This is from a site that is World News Today. They have the Osama bin Laden footage and report, so they have very current stuff. And some of the things with HyperCard are still on this site, even though it's a current compilation today of all sorts of news and video. And I'm going to step to the next one to show that... If you put in USS Voyager HyperCard into Google, you'll get some of these links that allow you to go back through and see how HyperCard was used in this particular um, venture over several years. The, if you use McAuliffe, Revolution, and Nabble, you'll start seeing conversations that a particular person had when he was saying, well, how do I do this, how do I do that? And this is back in, uh, say, 2007. And you'll see here that the, the, the gentleman's name is named, his name is Bridger Maxwell. And the reason I'm focusing on him, him at this moment is that Bridger Maxwell at this time was 17 years old, and he was working in Utah for this space education center. And he had a lot of questions that were very, very um, intricate, diving into um, how to use HyperCard. And... The interesting thing is that he's one of those 
major overachiever of achievers because he's still active today. He's still on Facebook. In fact, I just looked him up. He does posts even this last week. He's now a student at MIT, but you're going to see that he's uh, formatting XML data. And this is something he made. For, he made an app for the iPhone. Then we're going to look at this website and the 2008 Best App Ever Awards. He won an award for his app named Lumen. And again, these links are on my page. So here's somebody who's not only back in the days of HyperCard, but has rolled forward through the years. And he even asked questions here about Rev CGI, which means now he's into the cloud and paying attention to those kind of uh, apps that we might be building over the next six months to two years. And now we're going to see one more here following part of his little history. He won a semantic software scholarship. So he's certainly somebody worthy of note. Then, of course, a few people like the fact that he's also asking about Linux on Revolution. Um, and we got maybe one more here, and then we're going to move past Bridger Maxwell. But this is an example of someone to follow because now he's doing broadcasts on OS X. Um, 